I know it's poetry when expansion and recognition combine. A poem which simultaneously introduces me to something new. But it's something so utterly persuasive that surely I already knew it. So there's, there's an instant of, yes, exactly. How could it ever be otherwise? But it's accompanied for me by a need to quarry into the structure of the poem, its words and music, to find out why I've responded like that. And I need memorable images embedded in the movement of the poem, a movement which takes me into the speaker's consciousness. This sonnet by Denise Riley speaks from the heart of bereavement, of a need to affirm the lost person's continuing presence and of the fluidity of the boundary between them both. The poem proceeds with imperatives, with corrections, with fragments. Almost every sentence is composed of two parts, divided by an m-dash or a colon. These permeable divisions, I think, represent the continuing struggle to maintain a conversation between the mourner, who is unquiet as a talkative ear, and the lost person. There's nothing easy about making this connection, but the concluding couplet slots almost effortlessly into place as a perfect expression of what every bereaved person has felt, but until now lacked the words to acknowledge. Listening for Lost People by Denise Riley. Still looking for lost people Look unrelentingly. They died is not an utterance in the syntax of life where they belonged. No, belong. Reanimate them, not minding if the still living turn away casually. Wind rucks up its skin, so the sea tilts from red blue to blue red. Into the puckering water go his ashes, who was steadier than these elements. Thickness of some surviving thing that sits there, bland. Its owner's gone, nor does the idiot howl, while I'm unquiet as a talkative ear. Spring heat, a cherry tree's fresh bronze leaves fan out and gleam. To converse with shades, yourself become a shadow. The souls of the dead are the spirit of language. You hear them alight inside that spoken thought.